So this is the things we've got today. I've been through the bags already just to check what it is, so I've got a vague idea. But let's get stuck in. The first item is a bunch of rotary encoders. These were extremely cheap and I realise why now because I bought the just pure encoder without the small breakout board. So to I squared C or, or whatever. Bit of a shame, but I'm sure I'll be able to use those. Um, I do have a project in mind, although I may use the ones I've already got, but I've got the breakout boards, and that is to do a, a small edit and jog shuttle wheel, which um, I've made the change to DaVinci Resolve, so I have a couple of ideas and shortcuts that I would like to do, and I think that would be pretty handy. The second thing, uh, this is a, I would say, sort of a charge controller is the best way in the most basic form to design for 12 volt lead acid batteries it can take in between 15 and 28 volts and it'll output regular um well i'd say 12 volts but it'll output about 13.55 is shown there with a flow charge and 14.8 um is the overcharge protection there this is a teeny little board and it wasn't too much but the idea is to use it for the wind turbine. I used a regular solar charge controller in the form of this one, the EP EVA LS1024B, which should have worked great, but with wind, the voltage is just extremely variable and it's for very short bursts. And I wasn't actually able to see what was happening there. So the idea is to try this is a simple thing. And it gave me some motivation to do a follow up video for the wind turbine as well. So that's one that's definitely going to be used. Okay, what's the third one? Ah, this is for another up and coming project. And these are some infrared LED receivers. I've got a small game planned out to tie in with the board that I showed in one of the previous post bags which was the TT Go board that's it the TT Go with screen board um, and that's to devise a, a small game I already have some infrared LEDs to use as the transmitter and I've got these to use as the receiver and I've just went for the raw IR receivers instead of the ones with breakout boards because it was far cheaper. So that's going to be a new video coming up soon. What here? Uh, this is a whole bunch of breakouts, and I need to get back into de designing some circuits. But in the interim, what I had been finding was sometimes you buy these are probably actually this is a bad example, but SMD chips basically things like AT thirteens and AT tiny eighty fives and things like this and other chips and it's then how do you work with that if you want to breadboard something? It's extremely difficult. So what I've done is I've bought a few of these breakout boards. I breakout boards. It's a board I guess. But when you push down you can see the little prongs come out and you can drop your chip in there if you pop that back up and then that then breaks it out into breadboard friendly pins i've not used these in anger yet um but they should be pretty handy there is different spacings depending on the components you're using now so i don't think this is every permutation you can get but i just bought a few and they're pretty handy and i also bought these which are I would say a slightly more permanent solution, but more permanent in the sense that you're going to have to solder. And it's a very similar thing, just a breakout. With it having these extended pads here, it does mean that you can accommodate chips of different widths, and it just means you're going to use you know, more or less of a pad, as it were. So those are quite handy as well, and that just breaks it out of the standard 2.54mm header spacing. And these were dirt cheap. So they're going to be pretty handy and like I say I've got some ideas and projects and designs that I'm working on. Some using surface mount and so that would be really handy to do. 
That's the bag for that. Okay. This is a fairly low tech thing, but something that I go through quite a lot is these barrel jack connectors. I think they're sometimes called CCTV connectors because they're commonly used for that. And these are just really handy. I use them a lot for prototyping the overhead light that I've got. You'll have noticed that I showed on the, in the video for that. On the tail part of it, I just use one of these, which then can use a standard 2.1 mil by 5.5, I think it is. Um, barrel connector and it just breaks it out of there the only thing I have done sometimes is if you put a bit too much current through it breaks it and there must be something inside here and it's not intentional but something in here melts um, when the wire overheats and it looks visually fine but it just no longer works and these were cheapest chips so that's why I, I just picked up a whole bunch I try not to destroy them but I end up going through them so yeah come can't do any harm to have some spare. This big box was extremely well packed. And if I remember, I think I remember what was in it. Yes. Big tree tech. Think of the ducks, people. Think of the ducks. He got squished. I'm not sure if he's going to reinflate. But yeah. You got a free duck anyway. So yeah, this is um, this arrived extremely quickly and came really well packaged. And this is one of the new 32-bit controller boards for 3D printers. And I've kind of rendered it useless though, in the respect that I've took a different direction. I have a I well I bought an Anet A8. Don't ask me why, but I bought it. Um, it was cheap and I thought it would be good to have a project because um, I'm a fool. So I bought that for around £90 and then before I'd even assembled it, I decided that the AM8 conversion kit would be great. So I bought the AM8 conversion kit from a great company in Portugal, Ratrig. I'll link them down below. I bought that and then that gave me the AM8 and I started to build that up. And then realize the shortcomings of the Anet A8. I'll show some pictures when I'm doing this. And then realize the shortcomings. And so then I had to buy a MOSFET, which I did. I purchased a MOSFET. And then I needed a power breakout switch because the model I got didn't come with that. So for safety, to be able to turn it on and off and have a fuse built in as well. And I started doing these things and I bought these things along the way. And then I kind of lost interest and then it sat there for a while and then lost love with the a net as a platform and then decided to go in the direction of transforming it into semi prusia so my father has a mark 2 and a mark 3 so he purchased the upgrade kit for the mark 2 to 2.5 which came with a new bed so i got his heated bed but then I decided to go whole hog. So I've actually purchased an Ainsy Rambo board and I've purchased the Mark 52 board and the Power Panic and I've also purchased the other associated gubbins that you would need to transform that into basically a Bay Prusa, I think it is, where it's got the full frame. So that's something I'm working on at the minute. We just need to print a few bits and pieces, but we've got all the hardware. And that is using a mix of Prusa and Prusa Bay and other parts. So that's something, if people are interested, I may do a video. But I've put pictures up as I was going along there. I'll, I'll edit them in. Um, so if people are interested in that, that's something I can do. But yes, that's the SKR version 1.3 board, which is meant to be a great board. But I have no use for it now. So I'll have to maybe have a think. And this final package is something which was very kindly sent to me by a member of the maker community, John Macro. Sorry if I've butchered your name there. And this is a Wemos shield, and he has called it the D1 Mini Lighting Shield. And this is designed to work with WS2812B chips. And the beauty is it can take in between six and 24 volts at up to three amps. Um, 
and I'm just reading off his spec sheet here. It can do three PWM channels up to 2.5 amps for controlling RGB LED strings and one channel with a WS2812B driver. And you can stack these up as well. You just need to put a voltage divider on in the form of the correct resistors, which will be here, to control which voltage input you're going to be using. So yeah, so this looks a great little board. Um, it's got the little inductor there. Um, and it's just nice to have everything on the one place. The pitch of these connectors looks tiny. I think it's two millimeter. So I'll have to see if I've got some of these. I think I do have some right angle headers. But yeah, I'll put a link down to his site below. But this looks a really good board. And it's RGB. So it's got to be good. It's RGB. So yeah, so that's something we'll... Maybe I'll do a video on in the future and I'll integrate that into Home Assistant and we can get some funky lights. This could be used to work with the saucer shaped um, light that I'd made for my children. But this is maybe more deserving of something, a bigger string of LEDs and the fact that you can put a high voltage in, that's maybe more what it's aimed at. But yeah. So that's it for now, and a lot of these were purchased for future and upcoming projects, so hopefully I'll get my bum into gear and get a few of those more completed and get some more videos out. So, as ever, thanks for watching, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later.